Hi there, welcome. I understand you guys are going to be coming to Corby Business Academy next year and I would like to welcome you to the History Department. Um, my name is Mrs Simmons, you will be joining me and a number of my colleagues, the historians, in September. And you know, it's a shame that we can't meet each other face to face right now, but I uh, can't wait till after the summer break, then we'll all be able to meet up in September. Calling all students transitioning to year seven. Are you there? Super. Okay, chaps and chapesses, it's time for us all to blow away the cobwebs and the dust from our magnifying glasses because we are going to need those. What we're going to need them for? We're going to try and solve a crime. Are you ready? Let's continue. So today, you guys are going to be a detective. Imagine, it's 1950 and you have been digging in the soil with your spade. As you dig down, dig down again, and then a little bit more, you discover something unusual. What do you find? You find the face of a man. <gasps> Ooh, it's a bit scary. The next few slides are not for the faint hearted. So it comes with a warning. Only the brave should continue because we are actually going to see the images of the individual at the crime scene. It's all real. Are you sure? You going to join us for this? Good. So we've got the discovery. Let's have a little look. Oh, wow. Do you see him? The guys that were digging, they were digging in something called a peat bog. So there's quite a lot of acidic soil in a peat bog. Um, peat is like soil that you can burn, so it's like a fossil fuel, you could say it's a fossil fuel. And this is where this chap was found, and he was found laying on the right side of his body as if he was still asleep. He wore no clothes, except for a pointed skin cap and a smooth hide belt. So just something on his head and something round his waist. His hair was cut short and round the neck was a rope, a rope noose and an iron ring around his neck. Cripes, that must have been awful. It was drawn tight around his neck and his throat. Oh, something else I found out about the Tolan man is that you could actually see the whiskers on his chin. And it just looked like the day before he'd had a shave because he had enough whiskers on his chin to suggest that he'd only had a day's growth. Oh, shaving one day and then you end up with a rope around your neck the next. How does that all happen? Let's find out. Okay, Super Sleuths. So it's time to find your notepad, your notepad or a piece of paper, pen or a pencil, because you guys are going to have to take some notes now. You're going to use your observation. So that means that what you see, you're going to think about and you're going to try and work out how the Tolan man ended up where he did. So where, what, why kind of questions. So you're going to need them to write your detective notes and we're going to have a look at the evidence. Now in history we tend to use a special word for evidence and that's sources. No, no, not sources, not the sort, not that one. You put them on your chips. The other sources of information. And it's up to us to work out which ones are the most reliable. Are you ready? 
OK, so now it's time to look at the evidence. Let's have a look at the first source that we have, source A. When somebody died in the Iron Age, he or she was not usually buried in the same way as a Tolomon. They were cremated, which means that they were burnt to destruction in a funeral pyre. So that could be like on a pile of logs, uh, sticks and such like. And they were then put into an urn. So an urn is like a, a pot of some description and was lowered into a grave. The urn was then often covered with stones and then encircled with a ring of stones. So, does that sound like our Tolan man? Mm. There was quite a lot of him left, wasn't there? Source B. Let's have a little look what we've got here. So we've got two images. We've got images on black and white and we've got the image of Tolan man. So what we can see is a rope noose and a neck ring. Iron Age people buried neck rings with their dead as an offering to the spring goddess. Ooh. What does that mean? Let's have a look at the next piece of evidence, Source C. Only 80 metres from the place where the Tolan Man was found, another bog body had previously been found. This was called the Elling Woman. She was wearing a cloak made of animal skin and another piece of animal skin wrapped around her hips and her legs. Now, how does that differ to the Tollen man? Have a think. Source D. The German tribes hung traitors from trees and drowned cowards in fens under piles of sticks. Sounds horrendous. Does that link in, do you think, with the Tolan man? Mm. Where was he found? And what was he found with? Saucy, what have we got here? This is an earth goddess of spring statue found in the bog. Now we've heard about the spring goddess before, haven't we? Goddess of spring. And she was kind of like um, a god or a goddess that so kind of celebrated or was associated with the passing of the, the dread of winter where nothing grew and it was all terribly dreary. And the goddess of spring, actually, that gave people hope because things were being uh, reborn. We would see the green shoots come through. And that meant that actually life isn't going to be quite so hard. So have a little think what that might mean. Next piece of evidence is source F. The German tribes worshipped the goddess of spring. Every spring a cart carried a statue of the goddess in procession. So it's in a procession, that's like in a carnival of some description, you know, lots of people getting together, walking together, walking behind each other and having a celebration. Afterwards, the cart and the statue were washed by slaves. And then the slaves were sacrificed. Oh, my goodness. What can you make from that? Do you think the taller man might have been a slave? Mm. Next piece of information, we're going to be looking at source G, which tells us about the noose that was found around Tolan Man's neck. Around his neck was a braided leather rope tightened in a noose. So the noose is like the loop that goes round. The rope had left a clearly vis visible furrow in the skin on the sides of his neck and under his chin, where there were no marks on the back of his neck where the knot was placed. Hmm. The rope was strong enough to hold the weight of a grown man. The loose end, which was approximately one metre long, was rolled up and placed under the Tolan man and had clearly been cut with a knife. The forensic examiners had no doubt when they decided on the cause of death. The Tolan man had been hanged. What do you think? 
Saw Sage. Well, when the body of the taller man was removed from the bog, the remains of some plants were found that had been trapped under his body. These were dated and they were found out to be about 2,000 years old. Wow. We live in 2021. So that would mean that was the time of Christ. Long time ago. Let's look at source I. The belt was tied around the body's hips. The belt was about 77 centimetres long, so just a little under a metre, and made of thin pieces of leather. One end of the belt had an oblong cut through which the other end of the belt had been pulled through and secured with a loop which could easily have been untied. Hmm. Does that connect in any way? Have a look at your notes. Moving on to the 20th century with Source J. On x-rays, the doctors were able to see the Tollen man's teeth. The teeth tell us how old he was and when he died. His wisdom teeth, so they had the teeth right at the back, had grown and they appear when people get a little bit more mature. So in about 10 years for you guys, when you're around 20 years old. Do you think that's significant? The questions that we need to answer? Have a look at your notes again. Back to 20th century technology again. So let's have a look. Scientific report. Have you got anything uh, that's similar to this on your scientific report? So, the age? The heart and the other organs were healthy. The wisdom teeth had grown. These kinds of teeth appear in people around 20 years of age. How about the contents of the stomach? Well, this tells us that the man had eaten soup at least 12 hours before he died. The soup was made up of seeds that were connected only with the spring. And the estimated time of death? Well, with the plants being trapped underneath the body that are about 2,000 years old, that would suggest maybe that he died around that time. What do you think? Okay, so let's see. How did you get on? Do you think you're going to be able to answer the rest of these questions? So I want you to have a look through your sources and I want you to try and answer the following. So what have you found out about this person? So the identification, what do you think? Do you think he was a slave? Do you think that he was just your regular guy? Um, was he male? Was he female? What is the identity of this individual, the person that was found? How about their age? Yeah? Did you all get that? And the cause of death? You know, we've got loads of clues in there, haven't we? It's up to us to decide what the cause of death was and then Big, big question is, why? Why? Why indeed? Do you think he was murdered? Or do you think he committed suicide? Or do you think he was sacrificed? So bearing in mind that we've got an awful lot of information on the spring goddess. And at this period, so the Iron Age period, it was well renowned for people to be sacrificed. So revisit your clues and it's up to you guys to make a choice to think, how did he meet his demise? Okay, great work year sevens. So let's have a little look at your answers. 
Okay, so you guys have been playing a detective, haven't you? You've been looking at the clues, you've been following the evidence. But do you think it really was a job for a detective? Or do you think it might have been better for an archaeologist to investigate? So the difference is, when that body was first found, it was so well preserved, so that means that it looked like it had only been there for a little while. You know, it was naturally... Um, for the, it was natural for the people to consider that it was a murder, a recent murder. But with something that's about 2,000 years ago, something that happened that time ago, then that's really kind of like ancient history. And the Tollen Man, we could say, was a bit of a relic. And archaeologists love unearthing relics. So what do you think? Detective or archaeologist? Mm. The evidence, the sources, revisit your notes. And if you think you have solved the complete mystery of the Tolman man, who, why, where and when, then pop your answers in the message box. It'd be great to compare to see the different answers that we get back. And thanks for taking the time out for doing this lesson. And we really, really look forward to seeing you at CBA in September. Have a good summer. Bye.